Hello and welcome to another video tutorial Monday. This week I wanted to play around with some new stuff that I just got in and create a cute happy card um, that would be great for a lot of different occasions. So I'm using this new Hero Hues paper. They came out with a new color line and this is their pool colors and I really love these kind of aqua blue with a hint of yellow in them which is really great. I use aqua or I use Aqua Mist cardstock all the time from Paper Tray Ink. So this is a very close representation of it. And for a comparison, this is Aqua Mist and this is Hawaiian Shores. So you can see the colors are fairly similar, but I like that these three coordinate really well together. So that's really cool. I'm going to be using the middle one, I think, for my card. And what I really like about the, using this for card bases is when you make the card, the inside is white. So whoever you're giving it to won't have an issue reading the card, or if you're giving it to somebody to give to somebody else, they won't have an issue finding a pen to write on it. So that's really cool. So I've just cut down my standard size card, which is half the size of a sheet of paper. So it's five and a half inches tall by eight and a half inches wide, folded in half. And the next new thing that I just got in, and by the way, I, I ordered all this through Simon Says Stamps. So you can go and order all the things that I have here that I bought recently um, through their website. And I'm using this paper pad from Basic Gray from their out of print collection. And I'm in love with all of these prints, especially this one, which is the one I'm going to use in my card. And this one is so cool. So I've cut down just my standard size card front, which is 3.75 and seven, uh, 3 by 5 inches. And I can go ahead and adhere this to my card base. But first, before I adhere it down, I'm going to use some pumice stone distress ink around the edges. I'll adhere it down with my regular adhesive because for my sentiment, I want it to go across the card with a piece of vellum. So I want this to be as flat as possible so that I can sew on the vellum and that the stitching won't show, or the, that the adhesive won't show. So I can just get right over this and center it. And the reason why I'm just using a sentiment on this card is I really want this pattern paper to shine as kind of like the image. So I'm keeping it really simple, and that's a really nice way to make an easy card um, that really shows off your beautiful patterned paper that you collect, if you're anything like me. <laughs> um, my next thing is I'm going to prepare my sentiment to go on the front of my card. I have this sentiment from Paper Smooches Stamps called, this is from their Pretty Phrases set, and I have the Celebrate sentiment. And actually, Simon Says Stamp will be carrying Paper Smooches stamps as soon as they can. I know they're working on getting them in, so that's really exciting. So you'll be able to buy them from Simon Says Stamp as well. And I'm just running a piece of dryer, a dryer sheet over the front and back of my vellum to keep the static cling down because this silver embossing paper, embossing powder is super fine and it likes to stick where it's not supposed to. So you have to be kind of careful. Next I'm just going to ink up my stamp with my Versamark ink pad and then stamp down when you have it centered and make sure you don't wiggle it too much because the ink is slippery and the surface is slippery so it's going to want to wiggle around but you want to keep it from smearing. Now we can go ahead and sprinkle on our embossing powder And you can tap off the excess with your spoon or your finger. I like to keep as much static away from the piece of vellum as possible. So that's why I use the spoon that I use to apply the powder with. And this is something that I do with almost every piece of embossing that I do because not all of the powder will come off even if you do a really good job getting rid of the static. I like to go back in with a really really fine paintbrush and make sure I have like a nice fine point on it 
and then go back in and you can brush away the excess powder. And it's really important to do that in areas that the powder is really sticking down. With metallic embossing powders like this, sometimes you get kind of the glitter around the image and that's fine because it will wipe off, but you want to make sure to get as much of the excess embossing powder off as possible. And now we're ready to emboss. So I have my heat gun here and I'm just going to make sure to hold it away from my vellum so that it doesn't uh, scorch or burn the vellum but make sure to keep it moving and going kind of like an iron if you think about it that way constantly moving constantly going heating the whole thing without burning a spot so I'm just going to do this until it looks like it's one fluid um, piece of embossing and there are no little grains of embossing powder left and then a trick with vellum is while it's still hot and cooling you want to keep it moving so that it doesn't stay warped and by, keep it, by keeping it moving this will keep the um, embossing powder nice and flexible and you won't have any warping or you know waviness when you adhere it to your card. So that's looking really good even though it's a little bit warped that happens when you heat it, uh, vellum but it'll be fine once we adhere it to our card. I'm planning on adding some stitching to make it look like it's being held down by the stitching with some um, cream thread, but in the meantime I need to adhere this in a way that I'll be able to take off later. So I'm going to use some repositionable adhesive just on these two bottom corners here because I'll stitch across the top first, take off the repositionable adhesive, and then it will be adhered enough where I don't have to worry about adhering it with anything else. And actually I'm going to add even a little bit extra rep repositionable adhesive on the top here just for while we're piercing holes. So I'll put this underneath, or on top of my mouse pad. And I'm going to use my handy Tim Holtz ruler, which I love this thing. If you haven't seen my videos using it, I'll show you on the screen here. You can click to go to the first video I used it on. Um, I just, I use this thing every time I craft. It's wonderful. And it's, I think it's maybe, it's less than $10 for sure. I think it's about 7 or $8. Totally worth every penny. So for this, I'm going to line it up so that the eighth inch line is right where the vellum ends. So my, my piercing will be one eighth inch in from the vellum edge and then one eighth inch out from the vellum edge. So we'll have one eighth inch, eighth inch here, one eighth inch here. And I'm going to skip every other hole so they'll be every fourth inch and that way it'll be perfect zigzag stitching. Alright, so I've actually done every hole across here because I decided that it looked a little too sparse the way I was doing it. So I'm going to try something else when I stitch across it, but I'm still going to do another eighth inch from the vellum line or one quarter of an inch from the piercing, the holes I just pierced. And I'm going to line it up so that the holes match up perfectly and that's another great thing about this ruler is that all since all your holes are spaced perfectly they'll always line up perfectly as well so I'm going to go all the way across here now that I have my holes pierced all the way across the card all four lines of them I can go ahead and start stitching first I'm going to go through and make sure my repositionable adhesive is removed you actually don't even have to remove it because it doesn't really show through the vellum but I like to remove it just to make sure and then I can start stitching across the card now for this first I'm going to pull it up through the card and then just secure it with a little piece of tape when I come all the way back around I'll tie it in a knot just to make it a little bit cleaner but for now it's good to have it in place I'm just going to go start here and then skip a hole up on the top and then go down and then go directly down to the hole below it and continue across in this diagonal fashion 
And then on my way back, I'll have these diagonals going across and I'll just cross them going the other way by going down again and then back up in a diagonal fashion. And then this will create this cute little kind of cross stitch all the way across. So I think that'll be really cute. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way across my card on both the top and the bottom and then I'll be back in just a second. Alright, so I'm back and I finished sewing. I have this really awesome texture of this like almost double cross stitch here. And I got that by doing, I went over one hole. Here, I'll draw it out for you. Let's say I have my holes like this. I sewed up like this and then sewed over two actually. So I have this really cool like double cross thing going on and I just want to finish off the card by adding a few pearls. I want to keep it pretty much like this because it's only four elements but they're all pretty bold and busy. So I want to make sure that this, it's balanced without being a little too crazy. So I have these um, pearls from the E-Line from Prima. And I actually have two packets of, packages of the same one. Because one thing that bothers me about these is that there's only two of each size. So I buy them in multiples of two. That way I have four in each size. It just helps um, you use them more evenly that way. Um, otherwise, you end up with little spares left over. Um, I really like the Hero Arts ones a little bit better because they come in sets of three. So you can always have um, your rule of three fulfilled. Alright, so I've added my pearls here. I added three on the bottom here, two of the smallest and one of the second smallest. And then here I had the smallest, the second smallest, and the third smallest that I used in like ascending and descending order. So that adds a nice triangle effect with the celebrate um, sentiment that I embossed in silver embossing powder. So um, thank you very much for watching this week. I've had a lot of fun experimenting with my new products and I can't wait to play with them more. Um, here's a picture of the finished card for this week. And here's a close up. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you again next week on another video tutorial Monday.